Hello, welcome everybody to today's lecture of water and its treatment. And in today's lecture, we'll be dealing with the ion exchange process. And uh, let me first go to the principle of the ion exchange process. Now, the word ion exchange is nothing but the exchange of ions that is taking place between the resin and the hard water. So, the process involves the, uh, the exchange of ions that are held onto the resin and for the ions that are present in hard water that is brought in contact with it. So that means when hard water is uh, made to flow through a resin, then what happens is that the ions that are present in the resin, they get exchanged with the ions that are present in hard water. So in this uh, process, both the cations and anions that are present in hard water are replaced by the cations and anions that are bound to the resin. So the process is very simple, very economical and very environmental friendly as compared to the, uh, the, uh, the lime soda process and the zeolite process. Now, what are ion exchange resins? The resins are insoluble, uh, high molecular weight organic polymers. Now you can see that this is a diagrammatic representation of a resin. You can see this, this is how the resin looks like and it appears to be very porous. Now the porosity of the ion exchange resins, it is responsible for uh, allowing the water to percolate through the uh, through the resin. Now the, uh, the resins, they have uh, ions that are present on the surface and these ions are nothing but the functional groups. The functional groups as we very well know, uh, uh, some of the functional groups are like the COH or uh, the quaternary ammonium ions or the uh, OH ions or the halide ions, uh, the amine ions. So these are the functional groups that are attached to, to the uh, resins and these uh, functional groups are responsible for the ion exchange properties. Now the ion exchange resins are of two types, the cation exchange resins and the anion exchange resins. Now the cation exchange resins, they have negatively charged ions or negatively charged functional groups. So like th this is one example of a, of a functional group that is the acid functional group that is RCO minus and H plus ions. So that means the RCO minus, they are the negatively charged ions that are present in the cation exchange resin. So this is one typical example of a functional group that is attached to a cation exchange resin. Now let us see how this uh, functional group is helping in the uh, exchange of the cations that are present in ha hard water. So here RCOH, this is the functional group that is attached to a cation exchange resin and when it reacts with the calcium and magnesium ions that are present in hard water, what happens is that the calcium and magnesium ions, they get uh, attached to the functional group, the, the negative part of the functional group that is RCO uh, and the H plus ions are liberated out. So that means when hard water is passed through a cation exchange resin, it what happens is that the water that is coming out as a result of the treatment is that it is containing only the H plus ions and all the anions that are present in the hard water. The calcium and magnesium ions, in fact, all the cations, they, are get, they get trapped uh, into the cation exchange resin. Now let us come to the anion exchange resin. They have positively charged functional groups. That means the positively charged ions are there. Now, this is an example of a uh, <coughs> of a uh, of a functional group that is attached to the anion exchange resin. Now, this is a quaternary ammonium uh, uh, ammonium salt having a hydroxyl ion. So that means this positively charged species is helping in the trapping of all the anions that are present in hard water. So let us see the reactions that are taking place. So this is the uh, functional group that is, uh, this is an example of a functional group that is attached to an ion exchange resin. And when the hard water containing uh, the, the negatively charged ions, uh, like the chloride ions, the sulfate ions, or the bicarbonate ions, now when they are passed through this anion exchange resin, so what happens is that all the anions, they get trapped into the uh, trapped uh, to the positively charged species and the uh, water that is uh, getting treated or that, that is passing through the anion exchange resin is containing the hydroxyl ions. So what happens is that 
the process of ion exchange involves the uh, passing of the hard water first through a cation exchange resin where all the cations get trapped into the uh, resin and the water that is coming out contains all the anions present in hard water and the H plus ions. Now when this uh, treated water is then passed through an anion exchange resin what happens is that all the negatively charged uh, ions that are present in the treated water, they get trapped into the resin and what is coming out is the OH ions and the H plus ions. So that means final, in the final step, the H plus ions that are released from the cation exchange resin and the hydroxyl ions that are released from the anion exchange resin combine to give water, only water. So that means there are no ions there, uh, present in this water. So it is this type of water is called as demineralized water water. So that means this water is free from any type of minerals and this ion exchange process in fact it, it can also be told as the demineralization process. Now let us see the diagrammatic representation of the this, of this process. Now as I said in the previous slide so this is how the ion exchange process is carried out. This is the cation exchange bed in which you can see that these are the gravels. Now these gravels are uh, there uh, the big pebbles or the big uh, stones they are uh, uh, they are they are present in this uh, cylindrical type of uh, container and this is uh, uh, this the purpose of these gravels is to support the cation exchange bed now this cation exchange bed as i said they contain uh, anionic functional groups or that means the negatively charged functional groups which help to trap the cations that are present in hard water. So when hard water is first allowed to pass through a cation exchange bed and as a result of its passage through the bed what happens is that all the cations that are present in hard water get trapped into the uh, into the resin and the water that is coming out is containing uh, the H plus ions and all the anions that are present initially in hard water. Now when this water is allowed to pass through the anion exchange resin, the anion exchange resin is a similar type of vessel containing the gravels and the gravels they are uh, uh, they, they uh, give a base to the uh, or the support to the anion exchange resin. Now when the water is passed through this anion exchange resin what happens is that all the anions they get trapped into this bed and the water that is coming out as a result of the treatment process is containing H plus ions and the OH minus ions and finally the water that is ejected out is uh, is containing only H plus ions and OH minus ions which combine to give demineralized water. So this is the process of demineralization by ion exchange process. Now this process description is the same as that as, as what I have told in the uh, in the previous uh, slide and let us come to the regeneration process. Now after a long use the resins get exhausted. Now what do you mean by exhausted? It is that the, uh, the, the resin is losing the capacity to replace the cations and anions present in hard water. Now then the, uh, the resin is said to be exhausted. Now how we uh, can regenerate the resins is that first the cationic resins can be regenerated by passing a solution of dilute HCl or H2SO4 through the first column. Now the regen re regeneration reactions are that the H plus ions present in HCl and H2SO4 they get replaced and uh, they get bound to the resins and what is coming out of the water is the calcium ions or the magnesium ions. So this resin is now regenerated that means the cation exchange resin is regenerated. Similarly the anion exchange resins can be regenerated by passing solution of dilute NaOH through the second column and the regeneration process is that when OH minus ions they get trapped into the resin and what is coming out is the chloride ions or the sulfate ions or any type of ions that have been originally uh, bound to the uh, anion exchange resin. Now uh, the resins, the resin bed that is the cation exchange resin and the anion exchange resin now they are washed with deionized water. Now what happens is that all the calcium ions, magnesium ions or any type of cations or any type of anions they are passed uh, out into the sink. So this is the process of regeneration. So let us come to the advantage and disadvantage of the ion exchange process. First of all, the advantage is that the ion exchange process can be used to soften highly acidic or alkaline water. Now this process 
uh, it removes hardness to the level of less than 2 ppm so that means uh, we get absolutely soft water as a result of the ion exchange process now it is very good for use in high pressure boilers now what is the disadvantage disadvantage is that the process is very costly as the equipment and the chemicals that are used are always expensive now if the water that is being treated that means if the hard water besides containing the calcium and magnesium ions they also contain some suspended particles then the water needs to be pre-treated while prior to its entry into the resins because this uh, uh, if we do not pre-treat it then the the turbid water can reduce the efficiency of the process and it can also destroy the resins so we need to we need a initial pre-treatment prior to the ion exchange process so this is the disadvantage of the process now for water to be used for domestic purpose the water softening by by ion exchange process will include only cation exchange resin that means if you are if you are intending to use the water the treated water for domestic purpose then the softening of water can uh, by the uh, via the ion exchange process will only include the cation exchange resins why because only the cations responsible for hardness that, that is the calcium and magnesium ions only those ions need to be removed the anions they do not have any specific disadvantage for water to be used for domestic purpose now the regeneration is carried out by using inexpensive sodium chloride solution so this is all about your ion exchange process uh, hope you have understood this thank you for listening to me